Hey friends, welcome to another YouTube video and in this YouTube video, we are going to learn how to paint tulips, parrot tulips and that's in red color. Announcement to make, I just launched a free mini course, Step Up Pignolias, avail 100% discount by using code FREEBIE, F-R-E-E-B-I-E. -E. You can check out the link in the bio and now let's get into the video right now. For this painting, I will be using HLab sketchbook. It is, the paper used in the sketchbook is Fabriano Artistico, 100% cotton, watercolor paper and it is in cold press. So I'm gonna flip out the page that I'm gonna paint on, which is this one. And the brush that I will be using is Silver Black Velvet, size 8. And this is in the travel series. So you can see it's a little bit different from the normal round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with painting with the let's say a warm red shade uh, the currently the color that i will be using is windsor red it's warm shade of red and then i will start with painting a tulip i won't be painting the tulip just in the center because that tulip will attain all the attention which i do not want i want all the attention kind of to be sprinkled all over the composition so i'm gonna start to paint a tulip from here almost i'm gonna give the basic shape I'm gonna start from like here is a bulge side. I'm gonna take a little bit of more red, giving a little bit of saturation. Maybe I can have a little bit over here and then there is one sharp edge at the side, two, three. There are gonna be a lot of sharp edges. And then there are gonna be few ones at the side. So you can see I'm just using the tip of the brush. To get that kind of effect and then I'm gonna join so I now I have a kind of outline and now I'm gonna fill it with the color after filling it with color I am gonna choose pick a little bit of let's say alizarin crimson and drop here and there in the flower so this is the base layer I will let it dry or you can also paint along once it is it is already wet I will do it in next flower so I'm gonna pick a little bit of more red color and I am gonna paint one more tulip very similar to this one but not exactly same so this is gonna be the overall shape of the flower and then maybe I'm just gonna fill it up and then I can have a little bit of sharp edges teeth coming out you can see and then a little bit of a lizard and crimson that I'm gonna drop in the flower the only difference in these two flower is they are kind of inverted and this is a little bit smaller as compared to the, this flower. very easily not being very precise at this point and then having a little bulge from the bottom and now I'm gonna join it just like this very easily and I'm gonna fill it up like this maybe I'm gonna give a little bit of petal at the side gonna pick a little bit of more red color and now I'm gonna give that rugged effect Alizarin crimson, the watery consistency of the alizarin crimson, dropping it here and there.
maybe now I am gonna add few more flowers just to kind of add a little bit of interest in this painting so four flowers a little bit too symmetrical though I try to break the symmetry as much possible but I'm gonna add few more flowers here and there maybe at the bottom side so I'm just gonna put this bookmark at the side and then I'm gonna start with painting a flower but this time I am not gonna detail it I won't be detailing it in the future though I am also gonna decrease the size of these flowers just like this and then there is maybe one more flower but this time I'm gonna pick, pick a little bit of more alizarin crimson and I can just paint one small one over here so you can see not being very precise and I guess I will let this dry for some time maybe the flowers that has already dried I will just start working on those so now I'm gonna pick up a little bit saturated a little in crimson directly and then I will be just putting the strokes and now detailing the petals and then a little bit of the side too I'll now go and add strokes like this which kind of makes a lot of interest in leaves and now I am gonna darken up the flower that is at the bottom which is this and kind of gives a really nice effect I'm gonna take a little bit of more alizarin crimson I'm gonna work in a lot of alizarin crimson now There are the areas where my paper is still wet but there are still areas where the flower and the paper has already dried. won't be detailing this flower a lot also won't be detailing a lot of this flower Once the flowers has dried, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna paint uh, a little bit of green elements. So I'm gonna paint stems and the leaves. I will start with painting the leaves. For painting the leaves, I'm gonna use sap green, 
permanent sap green from Windsor and Newton series. So first of all, I'm gonna go with the longer leaves just because to have a little fun and having a little bit of continuity. So maybe I'll have a little bit of wiggle in the center and then something like this. I will take clean water. I won't be picking a little any color for the stroke and I will just fill it up. So you can see I'm kind of having the variation of green, dark, light green. So I just love to have variation in my greens because greens, if you're using just one single shade of green, it's going to make the composition a little too boring. Maybe have one leaf over here. Maybe I'll just thicken it up or from here and I'm going to value and I'm going to respect the boundaries of the flowers and I'm going to fill it up like this. Now I'll just repeat, repeat the exact same step. I will respect the boundaries of the flower, paint around the flower, and then like this. maybe one stroke almost over here you can see this time the color is a little bit more dark i can also love to i'll also love to have one in the center one leaf in the center maybe just like this i'm not worrying if my petals are blending with each other currently i'm not focusing on that thing my main focus is on just on the shape of the leaves how they are gonna look their position they should not look odd So you should be painting your leaf in such a way, supposingly I have painted this leaf, the continuation at this side should be very similar from, it should be in sync, it should not look very weird. And now after that, once we have done, we can just add few leaves here and there. You can also paint over the flowers, but don't do that a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this leaf a little bit fine and then maybe coming out from this side, okay? the leaf part is still drying so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pick a little bit of alizarin crimson and i'm gonna mix it with the purple shade which will give even more darker shade And now I'm also gonna smoothen it up just like this. I'm gonna take a little bit of more color. Maybe I'll just put it over here like this at the very kind of areas where I need a lot of saturation. Once I have done this, I will pick a little bit of perylene green. It is a darker shade of green and I'm going to mix it with sap green. So I'm having a mid value and then I am going to define the leaves that which leaf should be at the top and which leaf should at the bottom. It is completely your choice how you want to do it. So here in this case, I choose to put this leaf at the back.
also you can have a little bit of more detailing you can add a little bit of color in the petals which add a lot of interest to the petals and the leaves so you can see like this we still have to paint stems for painting the stems i am going to pick thicker shade of green and i can just start from painting from here i guess and then i'll also have a symbol over here stem at this area stem at this area stem at this area i will maybe have one or two more stems just hanging in here and there and then i will just go back pick a little bit of alizarin crimson not alizarin crimson let's pick a little bit of perylene green and i will put more strokes I'm done with the composition guys.